the day I heard the news, it was it was like the worst day of my life, the worst thing I've ever felt. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it. And then someone from the background, although I didn't even know who it was, said, Kiki, your daddy has died. Hi people, welcome to my channel. My name is Kinyere and in today's video I have a beautiful guest in the building, Shiggis. We can have my sister in the building. Let's introduce herself to you. Hi guys, I'm Tochi, Chinyere's sister, younger sister. I'm also on YouTube and my YouTube channel is Being Tochi. We are going to be talking about a bunch of things, but many of them surrounding grief and the loss of a loved one. Um, so if you don't know, if you just started following me, um, let me just, you know, brush up a little on why we're talking about this. So I lost my dad in 2019 and I have a video. I'll try and link the video in the description. Um, I posted a video just talking about, you know, the moments, you know, a few moments after his passing and like the day he passed and everything. And, you know, I've been wanting to do a video like this, but I think it's, I, I feel happier that I'm going to do it with my sister. This month is our dad's um, posthumous birthday in a couple of days. So his birthday is on the 28th of October. So it just feels good. It just feels right that this video is coming in October. Um, so my dad passed on the 21st of November. 2019 so it's going to be three years in about a month i think i'll just want my sister to describe my dad um, as much as she can and then maybe i'll describe him as well right yeah. or what do you think yeah okay. if you maybe you meet someone as well okay, describe your dad tell me mm. about your dad oh you, you know i always tell my husband that i'm very grateful that he got to meet my dad because my dad died like a year after we got married right i mean it's less than two years after I got married, I lost my dad. If he had not met my dad, I would never have been able to describe the kind of person he was. Because he's not a straight... You think you understand. You, you know, yeah. you can't just put his character into words. Let me try. My dad was... Hmm, I'll tell you the good and the bad. He was a straightforward person. There's no corner. There's nothing... Corner, corner to him is direct. Is that you like it or you don't like it? You give it to you the way it is. Mm. He was very brilliant, very intelligent, very smart. Ah, he was. I feel like I'm. I, I I'm like him. So if you know me, you kind of have an idea of what he was like. Good. Where do I start from? <laughs> ah, man, I don't know. Okay, let me come in. Okay, um. My dad, I feel like the for me they've just they have just been different sides of my dad that I've seen at different times in my life. When I was a child, I would I would describe my dad as or like my memory of me being a child, I would describe my dad as a very easygoing, I don't care. Mm -hmm. kind of dad like he was like that favorite parent he wasn't the street parent he was the favorite care, not, not easy going sha towards his children that don't understand us towards i feel like at, at this point i'm describing him okay to us towards, right yeah towards his children because as a child i'm not really interested in how he is to other people right. i'm just more into okay, like how he is to his children right. so yeah. he was a very easy going i don't care can climb my head can push yeah. it in my mouth kind of father like he doesn't have wala, he won't beat you. At all. Even if he's you're being scolded, it's like scold them with you can like be gentle in your scolding with them, you know. That was how my dad was. Um that's how I remember him as a child. And then as an you know, when I got older, like my sister said, he's a very brilliant man, very straightforward. And his brilliance would put pressure on you because when you're sitting around him, you don't want him to ask you any question. That you was like a that. major fear because I feel like sometimes things will come up on the TV, maybe one scientific one, and everybody's like, hey, God, hey, God, please, oh, don't ask, oh, don't yes, ask. Yes, or you style and walk out. And I remember that's how I learned, like, I remember one particular word botanical I learned. Botanical names. Because, yeah, botanical names. And then the word resonance. I learned that word resonance from, it was force and pressure because 
my dad, like anything can come up and he will ask you questions on it. Yeah. So he believed you you should broaden your knowledge. Yeah. Like there's nothing you should know. You know a little every, bit, of, a bit of a bit of everything. everything. So yes, not that from sports to so like politics yeah. or culture and all yes. of that. Even when we are traveling, like if we're traveling to the village, he'll be asking, Where are we now? He yeah. was the one that made me know that when you are on the move, you should know at what point you are every time. Mm. Mm. He can just ask you, Tochi, where are you now? But I was sleeping. Yeah. So you don't know where we are. Yeah. He looking at the signboards. Yeah. He's looking around. You should know where yeah. we get to Asaba. You yeah. should know where we got into Onicha. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or if if maybe we are killing chicken, live chicken. Hey, he will ask you all the, the different parts, of, parts the of the body. Yeah. Education yeah. was his priority. Yeah. He loved doing things big. Everything big. If he wants to hold a party, he doesn't hold wow. small party. Yes, sure. He will go all out. Party My father cannot do enough. yes. He party cannot do party and say ten people. Love yeah, <laughs> he cannot do ten people. He has to be loud and big and excessive. Yeah. My father wouldn't have a party where you say you are looking for meat or there's no drink mm -hmm. or there's no rice. Mm -hmm. You will eat and you will eat in abundance. Yeah. You will eat and you will even steal. <laughs> that, that that's one thing. He loved things big. He loved meat a lot. Like he liked me, food. Nah, like you don't. But you? he loved like yeah. one of us. Yeah, he loves he loved meat so so much. He was very forgiving. That's one thing I liked about him. He yeah. can scold you now. Shout and then at the you. next minute, the next second, he's gone. Yeah. So if you are keeping, if you are carrying face for him, he probably won't even notice it. Yeah. Because the next time he will just talk to you like nothing even. Yeah, happened. Nothing happened. Ah, yeah, in fact, <laughs> if you start talking about him, people will not understand mm. because we can say one thing now. We'll say another thing that sounds as if it's contradicting to, this kind of yeah, character. Yeah. But everything is in one person. Yeah. What's your fondest memory of him? Mm. Well, I remember when we were when we were younger, and mommy will send us to bed. Let's assume mommy sends us to bed around eight p.m. Daddy comes back from work around nine p.m. and we will know that he will soon get back. But she wants her children to go to bed early, so she put us in bed. And when daddy comes back, he will whistle. <whistles> That's Chichi. That's me. So when he calls Chichi, he's indirectly calling the four of us. Yeah. But my mom has already put us in bed now. Mm -hmm. So we'll position Choma first. That's our last born. Mm -hmm. After Choma, prize. After prize, me. Then the boss, Chichi, will be at the back. So we just come out, avoid my mom. Mm -hmm. We are meeting by then. He will we will not even make eye contact because avoid my eye mom will be there. She will just be eye you. you. <laughs> she looks at her, she will eye you. So yeah. we, don't, we don't even talk to her at all. Mm -hmm. We just face my dad. Mm -hmm. And he will bring out Pringles. Pringles and Suya. Pringles suya. And suya. Hey, we will enjoy. Ah, oh, my Before God. To bed. <laughs> it was good. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Growing up with him was fun. Yeah. There wasn't that. I now realize that, oh, fathers can actually be strict. Because when I now started growing up, I now realize that most people, fathers were even more strict in mm -hmm. their houses than the, moms. than the moms. Like, it was so strange to me because then my dad relate. was just so... Yeah. I remember the day, I remember one day that he got back. I think he came back from Greece then. Mm -hmm. He came back from Greece one evening. And he sat down on the dining chair. And I was just so happy to see him that I wanted to push him around in the chair. So when I tried to push the chair, don't you could stop that now? What's the meaning of that? Just that tiny shouting made mm. tears rush out of my eyes. If there wasn't something because, that you were used to. Hey, no, 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 no. Daddy shouldn't shout at me. I was not used to it. It was so new mm. for him to raise his voice at me. Mm. So I remember how that made me feel. And I was so small then, maybe mm. like six years or seven years thereabout. When we were already grown in the house, when we visit, like whenever you are around, you come with your children and me uh -huh. too. You know that argument? Yeah. We're always argument arguing about sure. something. You know, unlike other families, I've, I've seen families where they don't argue because mm -hmm. argument is, it's is like risky. disrespect. Yes, it's like disrespect. Mm -hmm. It gets toxic. It's, mm -hmm. It brings hate. We argue for the fun of it. Yeah. We like it. Everyone's trying to prove a point. Yes, and we are all loud. We shout. We, in fact, mommy's job is to close the window so that the neighbors will <laughs> not hear. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Hey, and he was the center of it. You mm. argue with him like your mate. He knows that you are not disrespecting him. You are making mm. your point known, mm. and he will tell you his own part. Mm. I loved him for that. And in between, tell you you, you don't know what you are saying. You don't know. You what don't you know are what you are saying. You are you. talking rubbish. <laughs> you are talking rubbish. Um, <laughs> like, yes. One of my favorite <laughs> memories of my dad, I think, as a child, 
had to be um, when he was doing his, or I remember, had to be when he was doing his PhD. And like before he travels, we would write small notes of what we want. Each person, like yes. Tochi, Kiki, we write our different notes. You were the writer. And then we would sneak it into his bag. Yes. And my dad would see it and come back from Greece with those exactly. exact things that we want. Yes. And what, one thing that brought this memory back was I was looking at someone's post, um, a Kenyan blogger that I follow. And she went to this store. <laughs> Yes, because I remember seeing that post on Instagram. I was like, oh my God. And she went to this store to buy resources for her children. And then she took a picture of like the show glass. And the show glass had this Q and Q watches. And those were the watches my dad used to buy for us. Oh, Do you remember yes, Q and Q? Yeah. We loved those things. Like, I love them so much. They used to come in different um, patterns and colors. Yes. And anytime I'm resuming and school. And they were water resistant. Yeah. Baby. Anytime I'm resuming school, I would always have a new watch to go. Like, it, it gave me joy because I'm just like, okay, for this new school session, what? To watch am I going to have? What color? And my dad would just like, he will pack the watches, bring back, we'll share. And it was just so beautiful. And another thing I remember vividly about my dad was one time I was going to uni and that period of our lives, like things were a bit tight, things were tough. And I got back from holiday during that period and I, I had a job. I got a job at the church. So I had worked and I had like allocated how much I wanted to spend and how much I wanted to save because I wasn't sure if I was going to go to school with money. You know, I wasn't sure. I not. I mean, I could have gone to school without much. So I made sure that I got that job, saved, bought a few things. So when my dad took me to the park in Jibowun, he jobbed me. I went to book my tickets, and then when I was about to load the when we were loading the buses with our bags, my dad counted money and gave it to me. And like he was holding the money in his hand, he was giving me the money, and I was looking at him like, for what? I had to ask like, for what? I mean, you don't want it, and. Like the look on his face and the 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 feeling I got was like I know how tight things are. Like how did you get this money? So even like I was not in any way expecting money. You know, just imagine as a university student, you've worked, you've saved the little you can. I remember I even bought iron. I bought a couple of things for myself. So my dad gave me that money. It was like out of the blue luxury money that fell from nowhere because I didn't even collect the money. I was like for what? When I was like, don't you want the money? And I collected it. Like, that's just one of those things I remember so much. And I, I don't know. It just, it's just one of those memories that is so clear. It's so clear in my head. Anytime I remember him, I just remember that particular thing. So, yeah, those are a couple of things I remember about my dad. And, yeah, something else I remember. There was a day I was in our compound. Um, I think I was married then, or wasn't I? I can't remember. But we just did laundry, and I was washing a laundry basket. So I was, you know how laundry baskets, even though it's a basket, the bottom is not a basket, like the bottom is smooth. Mm -hmm. So I was washing the bottom, and I just heard somebody laughing. Just laughing. And I looked back, my dad was laughing. I'm like, what's going on? Like, why are you laughing? He said, what am I pouring water inside baskets? Like, <laughs> just the way you pour water and the water is coming. I'm like, I'm rinsing the bottom. This man was laughing. <laughs> He just kept on, and I was trying to say, I'm not, don't, are you, do you think I'm trying to gather the water? Yeah. Like, I'm rinsing this bottom, like, I have to show him, like, this bottom is dusty. I'm rinsing it, like, that's also something else I remember so, so well, and I don't know why, I just feel like there's some things that happen in life that, they just really stick. You don't understand yeah. why, but they just stick. Like, that's, yeah. they, that's one of those things that, that really stuck. What thing about you do you think you picked from him? Hmm, number one, shouting. Oh, God. <laughs> It's my husband that is suffering that one because <laughs> sometimes I am not trying to be rude. I don't mean to. I'm not angry. My voice is just loud. I'm just used to talking with that loud tone. So that shouting thing is number one. I know everybody hated it. Except maybe <laughs> Choma. Choma doesn't shout like yeah. that. Yeah, Choma doesn't shout like yeah. that. Maybe because she's the last boy. Mm, maybe. But shouting. Um, then I feel like I also got this thing of uh, moving on quickly, you know, we talk about something or we have an argument, it's not so difficult for me to like move past the matter, mm. I think I got it from him, so mm. I don't take some things too seriously like that, mm. I don't get, I don't get offended easily, I don't feel like you, I don't feel like you can bring me down easily, those two, and then... Mm, I think those are just okay. two things I got from him that I can remember now. I know, I know most of my characters are from him, him yes. 
He even used to say it. Mm. He used to tell mommy that, you know, touch is like me. You know, mm. touch is just like me. I think one thing I would say that I got from him, and I feel like we all have a bit of that, or we all have, it's just that being straightforward. Like, yeah. we don't miss words. Yes. It's, it's either this or it's that. Yes. There's no... There's no sugar coating around stuff, yes. and um, it, it, it sometimes it, it can come across as rude. Yes. Yeah, it can come across as rude. But then I also like that it kind of grounds you and it makes you understand that you have to be realistic yes. about a lot of things. I, I guess think you that's just one thing. That. <laughs> What's one thing that you'd have loved to tell him? Are you? I'll just tell him I love him. I don't know if I ever told him I love him. Right. I checked my last birthday message. Mm. That you sent to him? Yes. The last birthday message I sent to him. That birthday message was not very nice. I will have a story to tell about my own birthday <gasps> message. I think I said something like, um, Happy birthday. This year, I pray you. <laughs> I can imagine what's coming. I said something like, I pray you understand that one thing, one thing, one thing. Mm. It was just like Did he reply. He reply me like what a reality check. Yes, like I pray you understand that one thing. Like I just told him some things that I did not like. Yeah, but it wasn't a rude message, oh. Yeah, but I know that way he sees it. Probably like, <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like um, when people hear this, they will kind of get a bit lost as children, right? We had such an amazing relationship with my dad. He was the best father that you could ever ask for. And then as we, you know, as life progressed and as we grew older, the, the relationship we all had kind of started to diminish a bit. Um, some based off of some choices that he made. And then, I don't know, maybe just the whole tension of children growing older and everybody shy having mouth and wanting to do what they want to do. And maybe him not being in agreement. We kind of were not as close as I would have loved us to be, you know. So that also, there was also that, you know, that tension. And like, but when we, like when, when we meet up, when we go to a family house, you can't tell. You can't tell because we are all just, you know, we're vibing, we're gisting, we're discussing. What I would have said, I would have loved to tell him. Because even though you sent a message to him on his birthday, on his last birthday, I didn't send a message to him. And I did not because he did not send me a message on my birthday. So I was very particular. He didn't even send me a message. No, you did not. So, on your birthday, I'm not going to tell you happy birthday. You never really took birthday seriously. Exactly. That's another thing. You even have birthday message that you sent me. I didn't even send at all. You know, when he was sick, I would just stay like this. He would tell me to pray for him. I started pitying him. Was he sick around his birthday? No. Yes, he was already sick. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's just that he was still kind of moving around. Okay, yeah. It was just a time that just came that he just, he just stopped went down. moving around, you know? Yeah. We got close that period. I st there was a time I stayed with him in his room for a very long time. I was complaining about some things and he was giving me advice. Do like this, do like that. Before he died, I, I, was, I think I was okay with him. One of the things that really pained me is because I knew that there was there were things that I wanted to express. There were pains that I had, you know, things that I had come to that point where I was really ready to talk about them. I really asked questions like, okay, when this is happened, why did you do this? This is I was just waiting for the right time. And that's one thing that death has taught me. There's no right time. You, you can be waiting and that person would leave. Mm -hmm. I remember something happened in our house and he called um, or my uncle, his cousin, one of his closest cousins, went to our family house to sort the issue out. That period when he was supposed to go, or when he, yeah, when he was supposed to go, I was thinking, you know, I was just going to use that opportunity to come in and then since my uncle was around, my dad would want to listen and then I wanted to just come in and just, you know, express my grievances and so that we could sort things out. Just because even though I go to the house and we discuss, we laugh, I wanted us to have a better relationship as father and daughter, you know. So I really was thinking that that was going to be that period. And then I think my uncle said, Uncle Steven said something about he didn't want everybody to be there. He just wanted this person and this person. So that didn't happen. Oh, but like in my head, 
Hmm? I didn't even know. Mm, there happened. was something that happened. But in my head, I was like, okay, another day will come when I would call my uncle and then we can just sit down with my dad and I'll just express how I feel. And hopefully we can come to, you know, a conclusion and then we can just like forget about the things that happened. Like just get closure, you know. I had hoped that that was going to happen, but it never happened. And that's like one thing that death really taught me. Like it hammered it in my head that... There's no time in this life. <laughs> Someone can be as fit as a fiddle and then tomorrow, mm -hmm. the person will pass. Like, if anybody had told me in my wildest dreams that my father will die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know people die, but if you had told me that my father will die, I would say it's a lie. How? Where? How? Yeah, I guess we just never felt... And his death was the closest death I ever. ever experienced. Because I remember being in secondary school and people would say, oh, I've lost. I had a couple of friends that had lost their mothers or their fathers or their siblings. I would just think to myself, oh, God, like what makes me so different from these people that many people I know have lost somebody, but my parents are alive, my siblings are alive. So I went on with that for so long, apart from, you know, losing a friend in secondary school and then maybe my uncle, but like my dad's death was the closest, the closest day that happened and the way it hit me. I feel like it took me to another level of maturity. Mm -hmm. It made me understand life in a way that I did not yeah. know. Mm -hmm. I never... In fact, since it happened, I'm on another level. Right. I'm not the same right. person. Mm -hmm. It has changed me 100%. Mm -hmm. I now see life differently. I now mm -hmm. know that... Man, this life is just too fragile. Yeah. It's not so serious. Yeah. You will come and we'll and go. go. So, it just unlocks like a, a new yeah. level. We never sat down, like the four of us, to like process what was happening. But I know that we sat down differently. I had a conversation with Price. Then I had a conversation with you and Shoma. Okay, in the village. In the village. Mean, did you have any other conversation with anybody apart from like the? Did you? Did you? Well, have like when, a heart to heart discussion with anybody. Heart to heart. Well, I feel yeah, like all of you yeah, are not romantic. Feel like you are not romantic. They're not romantic in this family. No, so see, there's Chuma, uh, there's really no like my emotional. Yeah, like you can't. There's really nobody that you can emotionally pour out to. That, in my opinion, I remember when my dad passed, and it's so funny, like how death hits people differently so differently that's why when someone loses somebody and they are posting on social media don't be in your stupid room and feel that oh but why is she posting her father just died when my dad passed and my brother came to the hospital and i told him like in my my first my first reaction was tell him and then hug him my brother pushed me away with like the kind of force that i've never experienced before like he was just like like if, if you had hey. seen it you would be like ah, are they quarreling but that was his own way of showing how he was grieving. Like, he didn't want the hug. He just pushed me there and he just went to one corner to think or to process or whatever. So, hey, I like, it, it, it just hey. it hits you so differently. Like, I was, for me, I think at the hospital, I was calm. I don't think I cried. I don't think I cried because I went over to where, he, where you know, where he was laying and I just bent down. I, I wasn't crying. You know, but I cannot tell you the number of times I've cried after leaving that hospital up until today or like yesterday. But at the hospital, I, I didn't cry, you know. So it's just like, I just wanted to know if you had like had a heart to heart with anybody. I never had a heart to heart with, any, with, any, <laughs> with anybody. I think me and Choma just talked about it briefly. briefly. And... When, when, when my dad passed, the night, the night he passed, I remember like having a, a serious panic episode. I've never experienced in my life. It felt like someone had caught the the air in my airway, and it was trauma that I called. I called and because I didn't even I didn't know what to do. I was like, I was crying and then I couldn't breathe, and I was alone because my husband had to stay back at the hospital and it was raining. So and I think we had a light issue or like a gem issue, so there was no light. So it was dark. It was raining and it rained heavily that night. I mean, so it was I, I, it was scary because that had happened. I was alone in the room. The rain with the thunder. So I, I, I had a panic attack and I called my sister and my sister was just trying. She said, okay, breathe, taking taking air, okay, breathe out, you know, breathe in, breathe out. And that was what I did until for somehow me, I fell asleep. For me that day I was just trying to move past the day. Mm. I couldn't come to terms with the fact that 
I feel like that day was even the easiest day. Apart from the moment, because you were the one that gave me the news. And none of you was it, there. It was right? because the first I room. Yes. That's when none of was, you was there. No, none of us was there. You mm. were the only one and maybe Price that saw him and then mom Price didn't see him. Yeah, but Price didn't see him, but Price carried him. Price was part of the people that carried him when they okay. were moving to the okay. mortuary. Okay, okay. I wanted to see him because after after he had died, I came to the hospital. Okay, he died in the hospital. And myself and my brother went to church to pray on that day. And we were just coming back. And we saw all our relatives outside. I mean, mm -hmm. relatives that don't even live in Lagos. They mm -hmm. were outside. And me, I passed. And I was like, hello. You know, I just waved to them because yeah. we were going to park. So I was like, Paris was like, are you sure daddy has not died? I said, God forbid. How can you say that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. ah. So me, I still came. I don't know if you remember. I was happy to see everybody in the same place. Only for me to see that you were crying. Mommy was sitting on the floor. I was like, what? You now told me. God forbid. In fact, as I'm here, I can't just take it. Yeah. I wish I could remove that part of my memory. I wish yeah. I could take it out. Because yeah. that jaw just... I don't know how to describe the feeling. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the sickness was going to be so bad, bad like that. And you know, to make matters worse, eh, in this whole grief thing... Moving on, I kind of feel like I haven't found closure. And I may never find closure because yeah. I never got the chance to even see him one more time. Yeah. Although the good thing is that the last time I saw him, my last talk to him was, bye-bye, I'll come mm. and see you tomorrow. Mm. I was with him one night. and We were all with him the yeah, night we before. Were, yes. Right? It was the night before. Yes. And he even called me good girl. Can you imagine? Like it's, it's crazy how... We were all, like, he had been in the hospital, but then the night before he died, we were Everybody all was. in the hospital yes. trying to get him to eat Amala. Yes. We can't go away like, oh, I remember, eat now, like, remember why are you like, the eat I now? Yeah. When I entered the hospital that day, immediately I saw him. For someone that is, be, I would say, a whole him. Yeah. You know, someone might want to say, mommy will say, who is half? Nobody. Yeah, has. yeah. It felt like a whole him. Yeah. He was too I felt he was too big to be in that position. Yeah. Just lying down looking helpless. Helpless. He had lost some weight. I couldn't just immediately I entered the hospital and I saw him. I just broke down. I couldn't just take it anymore. And he good. One thing that holds me back, I feel. One thing that is not letting me one thing that I feel you can't like really move I on. can't Can you really find... move on. I feel you know, people you, say with time. You, I don't think you, you have. I don't think you. But it's been three years. You have not moved on. When will you now move on? It's been three years, and it's still fresh to me. Yeah, yeah. It's still fresh to me. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything like moving on. Well, I, I don't know. People say it. I mean, I've seen people it's just, that I have think it's just the whole dad. saying. It's easier to you deal. Get... It's just easier. It's just not as difficult because as the days go by, you find better ways to, to you know, deal with the memory of that person or like deal with the loss of that person. We didn't even know what was wrong. We were still in that testing phase, and even though I personally feel like the hospital could have done better yeah. because the test took so long to come out, so to even address what the issue was, to even it was, do the test, yeah. Imagine, like, this thing you are saying where you said you came in and you saw our relations, even the ones that don't live in Lagos. You saw all of them yeah. and you were just thinking, the, when I came in, I didn't even reason that relations were there because of anything. I just thought they came to see him. So I passed them, greeted. Even the one that came from Abia State. Yes. I greeted her, she didn't answer me. And my mind, I was like, Abi, is there something I did a couple of months oh, ago yeah. that maybe my father told family meeting people? Because in that there, there was no way that death could have crossed my mind. Yes. I greeted them. I greeted one of them downstairs. She responded. Then I went upstairs. I greeted my other two aunties. No response. And I was like, how did that offend? They weren't crying. They just sat and they were just looking. And I was like, could I have offended this person? Well, she had greeted me. I was, you know, just hung around. And then the next thing I saw was just my mom coming out and she was crying. And then someone from the background, all the way, I didn't even know who it was, said, Kiki, your daddy has died. 
I didn't oh, see the person, so I don't even sharp. know. So my mom was coming. Like, they didn't tell me when I got there. It was seeing yeah, mommy you know, coming out. Knew. We didn't see you receive the news. Yeah. So it was seeing mommy coming out crying. So the person now thought it was best to just tell me then and there because obviously she's crying. That's what it is. So the person just said it behind me. Kitty, your daddy has died. Hey. And then the next thing I felt in my hand was mommy. I just had to hold her. And she was crying, you know. And then... But mommy is strong. And I had to walk in. And one thing I, that I would say that I wish I had also done was touch him even in death. Oh, you didn't get to touch him? I didn't get to touch him. I got to where he was lying. And I saw that, you know, they had stuffed his nose with cotton wool. Mm. He had a plaster over his head with his name. Oh. And so I, I, I just bent like this. I was just bending, you know, just trying to come to terms with it. And mommy called me out. Maybe he's even... And like at that I... point, I didn't, like, I was like, why is she calling me out? Like, could there be a reason why she doesn't want me to stay here? But now, like, looking back, I wish I had stayed longer. I wish I had even sat you know, I wish I had really fully taken him in because that was the last time I saw his body, you know. Because after he died, COVID started. So, and things were just a bit weird. Maybe he was transporting the body and everything. You know. Most times I just think back and I'm like, I wish I had, you know, just stayed there because there's not something in me that's making me feel like, okay, maybe when someone dies, they're still passing, you know, I don't know. They're still in that stage where they're passing from life to death. And maybe if you are with them and you say something to them, they might hear you or, you know, that kind of thing. So I've just, I've just always thought that I should have just stayed in that room a little bit longer. From the last time I saw him, I never saw his body again. Mm. So I wanted to... To get that last yes to see but price just warned me say tochi you mm. Mm. even if anybody wants to go not you tochi mm. so when price said it i don't Enough thought to myself reason. really what if i see it and i regret seeing it yeah so i was like no problem i'll wait till the burial mm. so i never even saw him only for corona to happen and then i couldn't even be there on the burial mm. it was mm. just too bad mm. i mean based on moving on i don't know i don't know I since my dad passed, I have I would say I've probably cried almost every day of the week. So the longest time I've gone without crying was when I went to Zanzibar. That's the longest time I've been that I'll say I've not shed a tear because of my dad's passing. Because it was like, you know, we're all together in the same space. So I couldn't even cry. It was when I got home. That day I got home. It just felt like okay, some something that reminded me. Your father has died. Back to real life. Your father has died. You know, right? So all that laugh, you are laughing in Zanzibar. Yeah, Hi. come back home and start crying. After three years. And while we were in Zanzibar, that was when we had like a brief discussion, me and the girls, about it. And I, you know, I was talking about getting a tattoo, and then it now clicked. I should get promise. As and a the tattoo. Name is in, it's it's good a beautiful for name. Like I thought of it before, but I think it just came briefly. I told somebody, was it? It wasn't you. Was it you? That means it's Ma. I told Ma. Not long after he passed, I was like, maybe a year after he passed. Even when I told them his name was Promise, they were like, ah, that, that's such a modern yes, name. Now. That people, they didn't know people named their children Promise way back in the day. It's, and I was like, that's when I, it, that's when I really appreciated the name. And I thought that, right. apart from it being his name, it's a word that holds more meaning, more meaning than it just being my father's name. Okay. Moving on has just, it, it's part of the things I've just said, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Because I've always wanted a tattoo, but I've not gotten one because I just don't know what to get. And then I also mentioned something on Insta story, you know, where I say, I use my dad's WhatsApp um, number as a diary where I just send him messages. I think they've transferred the number to somebody else. Huh? No, he, he had two numbers. And it's so, it's so weird and it's so emotional because I remember he had one number that he used to send me messages with. He even, there's, there's even a video oh, that he sent he the last the time. And when he passed, I tapped on the video to play, to see if he was going to play. Turns out I never downloaded the video and Tina yes. said, ask dad yes. to resend. And I'm just like, people are just, people are just messing with me at this point because where is the dad I'm going to ask to resend the video? So the video is was there, 3 MB, it was never downloaded. Oh, he was and, yeah, it was one that sent the video. Aww. Now it doesn't even say ask that because I feel like maybe it has they've it's given the number old. to somebody that yes, doesn't use WhatsApp. The messages are delivery. No, no, this was when he was alive. Okay. So we had like a small, a short conversation, and then like since oh, he passed from like the twenty fourth of November, I've been sending him messages. And when I bought my car, I told him. When I got into YouTube class, I told him. When I drove the car to the compound for the first time, I told him. When my sister gave birth, this was when you gave birth. I told him. I sent him this message in January. And I said the same thing. I sent him as if he's reading the messages, but 
I don't know. It just feels. It, it just feels like yeah. It just feels like I'm keeping him up to date. And the mess last message I sent him was on Friday. And even when I traveled, I told him I said I've traveled. You know, I've gone somewhere else apart from Dubai. And yeah, that's just what I've been using to cope or to deal. If you call it that. Message I want to just pass to everybody. Um. And I'm saying this because I lost my dad. It could be anybody else. I just feel like people need to love more. People need to love more. Because you don't know when it will be your last time. Yeah. I mean, we've lost our dad now. But we still have our mom. Yeah. Right. So, I feel like we just need to make it's the like an eye opener. It. <laughs> yeah, so. So, it's almost because as if you use one person as a scapegoat. Exactly. And it kind of teaches you how to exactly. deal. Yeah. So, that that second one, mm. I'm not using you to play. I know that the time will come when yeah. it will happen. Yeah. By God's grace. That's the prayer now. That we are the ones that we bury our, our parents. Yeah. You know? I know a time will come, but I don't want to have any regret. I don't want to wish I didn't enjoy any moment with you or give you as much as I could have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope it's somehow helped you in however way it can or however way it would. I enjoyed doing this video. And I like that it's going to be on YouTube forever and ever. And I like that it's kind of like a mini tribute. Yeah, to him. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a collab video that we just did. Um, check my sister's channel out. I'll leave her video link in the description. Make sure you subscribe as well. Um, give and give the video, video a thumbs up. up. All right.